My sill thought she could hide her affair, but I exposed her in front of everyone now my brother's filing for divorcer. I, 27F, have an older brother, David, 33M, who is currently married to Suzanne, 35F. So David and Suzanne have been together for the last four years and got married last year. Their relationship was the typical story of work colleagues who eventually fell in love. So they both had been working at the same company until David recently got offered a much better position in another company. Eam and Suzanne have always had a cordial relationship. I am not crazy about her as I have always felt like something was off about her. And regardless of my feelings, I never tried to interfere in their relationship nor did I ever discourage my brother when he told me that he was going to marry her. So now coming on to the story, we have all come down to our parents' place to celebrate Thanksgiving together. We live in different cities, hence it feels good to see each other after a long time. I arrived earlier than David and Suzanne as I had taken an extra two days off work so I could spend more time with my parents. David and Suzanne arrived later and Blair were warmly greeted by us. When I hugged my brother, I noticed that he wasn't his usual friendly self and couldn't even smile properly. He had dark circles under his eyes and looked like he had not slept for a long time. He greeted us meekly and went upstairs with their luggage. I felt concerned for him but didn't want to say anything in front of everyone. I whispered to Suzanne if something was up with him, and she just shrugged saying they had a long trip. I nodded and hugged my nephew, Daniel who was now 11 years old and seemed to be growing up so fast. Throughout our Thanksgiving dinner, my brother hardly interacted with us. Even when mom brought out his favorite pumpkin custard, he didn't even acknowledge it properly. So by now my parents were starting to get worried too. After our dinner, I was washing the utensils when my nephew came to talk to me. He excitedly told me how he had found a new game that he absolutely loved to play. We always talked about games so I asked him what the game was about. Daniel told me after I was done with my work, he would show me the game on his tablet. I was surprised to hear that he had a tablet of his own and asked him about it. He told me that Suzanne had given him her old tablet when she received a new one from work. So he continued to tell me how he loved playing all these different games and I laughed seeing his excitement. As I finished the last of the dishes, I dried my hands and followed him to his room, where he showed me the game and tried to convince me to download it on my tablet as well so we could play it together. His cheerful spirit was infectious, momentarily overshadowing the unease that lingered from my brother's strange behavior. We played the game for a while until Suzanne eventually came upstairs as it was time for him to go to bed. She took the tablet from him, despite his protest telling him that he could have it the next day. She put him to bed and we both then headed out of his room. I asked her if I could have his tablet so that I could continue playing the game and practice on his tablet as mine was lagging a bit. Suzanne hesitated, then with a faint smile, handed over the tablet. Sure, just make sure he gets it back tomorrow morning, she told me. With the tablet in hand, I retreated to my room, determined to learn the intricacies of the game before the next round with my nephew. I was busy playing when suddenly there was a text message notification on the top. I couldn't help but glance at it. It was from someone named Chad who said, Missing you already. I immediately froze in the middle of the game as the words sank in. I couldn't comprehend what I had just read. Why was my 11-year-old nephew getting texts like this from someone named Chad in the middle of the night? I immediately checked the message tab and quickly realized that the tablet was connected to Suzanne's cloud. That's when it hit me, she would have had her iPhone sync with this tablet hence the messages that were coming to her phone were also showing up here. She must have forgotten to log out of her iCloud account on this tab before giving it to my nephew today. Confusion etched my face as I tried to deduce why she was getting this kind of message. I opened the messages app with a bated breath and clicked on Chad's message. My mouth was wide open in shock as I scrolled through the message and I discovered a series of intimate conversations between Suzanne and Chad. I clicked on his contact picture and gasped in surprise realizing that he was my brother's neighbor. I had seen him a few times when I had visited my brother's place in the past. They were supposed to be just neighbors but clearly, their relationship had crossed into dangerous territory. Their messages were filled with details of all their meetings and plans. So they had talked about Suzanne's relationship with my brother in excruciating detail where she had revealed how she didn't love my brother anymore, but didn't want to be the one at fault for their relationship to break off. She mentioned how much she hated the fact that David didn't give her any attention because of his work and that she was glad to get it from Chad. Chad, in turn, had written how he loved being her neighbor so he could come over to visit her whenever he could. Their text messages were so graphic and disgusting to read that I wanted to puke in disgust. I couldn't believe that I had stumbled upon my seal's secret affair. It was a shocker, the kind that makes your heart race and your mind struggle to process the reality unfolding before you. I just didn't understand what to do and I wondered if my brother even had an inkling that Suzanne had an affair. My mind raced and I started taking photos on my phone of all their text messages. My hands shook and I was worried that Suzanne might knock on my bedroom door anytime demanding to have her tablet back. I didn't want my nephew to see these kinds of messages while playing. He might be a kid, but he wasn't stupid. 
If he found out these messages, it wouldn't take him a long time to figure out the truth just like me. I didn't want my nephew to find out if fought any of this because he was too young to go through this. After I had collected all the evidence, I incensed and wiped the tablet clean knowing that Suzanne's phone would also have all these messages. The entire night I tossed and turned in bed, unable to sleep. At 3 a.m., when I went downstairs to get water, I saw my brother sitting downstairs alone watching TV. So I took out ice cream from the fridge and asked him if he wanted a bowl. He nodded, and I sat down next to him, handing him the bowl. The glow of the TV flickered in the room as an uncomfortable silence hung in the air. Then I told him that I was always there for him, and he could talk to me about anything that was bothering him. Eventually, he spoke, sharing how stressed he was from work, but I could sense there was more. I hesitated but decided to take a leap of faith and address the elephant in the room. Is everything okay between you and Suzanne? I asked, trying not to sound accusatory. His eyes flickered with a mix of surprise and vulnerability. After a brief pause, he sighed and confessed that he had been feeling distant from Suzanne lately. I remained quiet as he went on to explain that he had no time to spend with his family when he was struggling to work two jobs every day. I was shocked to hear this as he revealed that he had taken up an extra job so he could sustain their lifestyle as well as pay their house mortgage on time every month. I continued to listen to my brother as he talked about their marriage and said that they were probably having a bad face in their marriage. At this point, I badly wanted to reveal what I had just found out about Suzanne, but I wasn't sure hearing his struggles how he would take it. The weight of the truth pressed on me, but I also didn't want to ruin my brother's marriage without confronting Suzanne first. You have to understand that my brother is six years older than me. I was afraid that he might not believe me despite the evidence, or Suzanne could manipulate him by convincing him that I was wrong. I needed to be absolutely sure that Suzanne was cheating on him. The next day, I offered to take her out for a relaxing spa day to which Suzanne immediately agreed. We had a great time and then I took her out for lunch. While we were eating, I decided to precariously ask her about Chad. Hearing his name, Suzanne immediately froze mid-eating and looked up at me. I didn't want her to play any games with me so I was transparent with her and let her know that I had seen all their messages. I told her that there was no reason for her to deny it as I had all the proof and just wanted her confirmation. To my surprise, Suzanne started yelling at me that this was her personal life and I shouldn't have invaded her personal life by going through her messages. I backtracked and let her know that I didn't invade anyone's space and Chad's message just happened to show up when I was playing on my nephew's tablet. I told her how inappropriate her messages were with him and she should have never given her tablet to my nephew without checking the device first. Suzanne got wide-eyed and asked me if I had wiped the tablet clean and I nodded. She looked relieved, probably thinking that I had no proof left, and told me that I should learn to mind my own business. She started to threaten that if I ever told my brother about this, then she would ruin my life. I looked at her blankly as I knew there was absolutely nothing that she could ever do to me. Her words were starting to piss me off, and I asked her why she was trying to defend her actions. She then tried to justify telling me that she deserved to have a little fun once in a while, and Chad made her feel better about herself. Hearing the lack of regret in her voice, I told Suzanne firmly that she needed to come clean my brother because this wasn't sitting right with me. She aggressively started to yell at me again, but I swiftly cut her off. I got up from my seat and asked her to find her way back home on her own. I didn't want to be in close proximity to her after seeing her bizarre behavior. Suzanne kept yelling at me as I left her there and drove away. When I reached home, my mother, who was waiting for us in the living room, asked me if I had a good date together with Suzanne. I gave her a small nod, trying not to make her suspicious, and walked to my room quickly. I needed time to think after the way Suzanne had just behaved with me. This was totally out of character for her, or maybe she had always been this nasty and had kept this side of her well hidden until now. The wheels were turning in my head as I went over our conversation word for word. Her threats didn't bother me, and I knew that my brother and my nephew needed to be protected from her. They deserve to know the truth about this woman. I decided to give her a few days to talk to my brother on her own. Hopefully she would open up and confess. If she didn't do it by her birthday in four days, then I would tell him. So I watched and waited for Suzanne to talk to David. Every time they spent time together, I hoped that she would do the right thing and tell him everything. But unfortunately, true to her character, she never confessed to him and pretended that we never had this conversation. If I was ever alone with my brother, Suzanne would interrupt us for no reason, perhaps afraid that I would tell him something. I would also notice her getting frequent text messages throughout the day, and from the way she smiled, I knew it was Chad, which meant that she was still in contact with him despite my warning. So I know how much my brother loved and worked hard to provide for the family hence, watching her continue to cheat on him, even though I had respectfully asked her to stop and confess to him, was a knife in my heart. So with her birthday coming up the next day, I knew that I had to expose her. My brother and her would be flying out in the evening after celebrating her birthday, so if there was ever a good time to talk to my brother, it needed to be before they flew back home. 
On her birthday, Suzanne was extra cheerful. It was as if she was rejoicing that she could finally get away from me and thinking that she had successfully scared me into submission. Little did she know what I had planned for her that day. My mother had lovingly prepared a grand meal for the birthday girl. We had invited a couple of our close family and friends to join us during the celebration. Suzanne loves being the center of attention and looks like she is having a good time throughout the day. When it was time to open the presents, she excitedly sat down with everyone to check them out. I watched her with a smirk as she kept going through the presents one by one. She was soaking up all the attention, clearly relishing being the center of it all. When she reached my gift, her curiosity was evident. It was a sizable package, and with excitement, she unwrapped it to find a photo album inside. The album started with a photo of her from her college days at the very top. She smiled and inquired if I had assembled her childhood pictures in this album, her eyes gleaming with the anticipation of a sentimental family memory collection. I smiled at her politely knowing that very soon her smile would turn to a frown. She thought that she could act all cute and innocent in front of everyone, but oh boy, was she wrong. The instant she flipped the album open, her face was met with an a uh, 4 sized photo of her and Chad. She continued to flip to see there were multiple screenshots of her messages with Chad. My mother and my brother, who were sitting on either side of her, leaned in to read the contents. My mother gasped immediately realizing what this was, and my brother wore a look of confusion. Suzanne hastily tried to close the album, but my brother was quick. He snatched the album from her hands and stood up to go through the pages. At this point, everyone knew that something was wrong, and they kept exchanging glances. So my dad, sensing something amiss, inquired loudly if there was a problem, and we watched as Suzanne's face turned fifty shades of pale saying that she couldn't run away from the truth anymore. Her angered gaze met mine, but I maintained eye contact, conveying through my stare that I wasn't about to back down. I had carefully considered this course of action. Even if it seemed extreme, she was the one who had chosen unfaithfulness, and it was time for her to face the consequences. After thoroughly flipping through the pages, my brother looked directly at me and asked if it was all true. I nodded in affirmation. Suzanne began to stammer out excuses, but the damage was done. My brother looked like he had been slapped with a brick of reality. Without uttering a single word, I had dropped the truth bomb, leaving the room in stunned silence. My brother then took Suzanne's phone from her hands, probably to investigate further. My parents who were going through the album now looked visibly stressed. My mother asked me how I had found out about all this, and that's when I spilled the beans. I told them I stumbled upon it by accident while using my nephew's tablet, which was actually Suzanne's. She forgot to log out of her account, so I saw all her messages with Chad and took screenshots. I went on to explain that I confronted Suzanne about it the next day, asking her to come clean with my brother, but she flat out refused. So instead, she tried to threaten me, which is why I was forced to reveal her affair this way. So my brother, having discovered the proof of Suzanne's chats with Chad on her phone and heard my side of the story, stormed out, probably needing time to process everything. So my dad, who had kept silent throughout the whole mess, finally spoke up and asked Suzanne to get out of our house. Suzanne caught in her own web, tried to come up with feeble excuses, but no one was willing to listen. So my dad sternly told her that what she had done was unforgivable, and she should have told my brother about this instead of forcing me to expose her in this manner. It was a glorious downfall to see how Suzanne had been exposed and was left red-faced in embarrassment. She started to cry and rushed upstairs in embarrassment. Since the incident, my brother hasn't flown back home with Suzanne. My nephew is staying with us and my brother has asked Suzanne to give him space despite her begging him to come back with her. My parents have talked to me more regarding this and they completely understand why I had to expose her this way. However, when I discussed the matter with my grandmother afterwards, she expressed disapproval. According to her, I shouldn't have disrupted my brother's marriage by revealing Suzanne's secret. Given my deep respect and love for my grandmother, her perspective has left me contemplating if what I did was right. So Reddit am I the asshole for exposing my Sills affair when she didn't reveal anything to my brother. Update 1. Thank you for everyone's honest opinion. While some of you think that I was indeed the asshole, I am glad to see that others seem to agree with what I did. I would like to clarify yet again that I would have never done this had Suzanne decided to talk to my brother on her own. This is why I had confronted her before exposing the truth on her birthday. I wish she would have been a better person and broke the news to him on her own instead of trying to threaten me. As for my brother, he and I sat down to discuss everything in more detail. It was heartbreaking to see my brother break down in front of me while telling me that he had no idea that his wife had been doing all this behind his back. He kept questioning if this had happened because he couldn't give her enough attention due to his two jobs. My heart went out to my brother, knowing how hard he worked to provide for his family. I told him that Suzanne's actions had nothing to do with him. He had always been an exemplary husband and father, and if Suzanne couldn't appreciate that, then she didn't deserve to be with him. Despite my attempts to console him, my brother remains deeply affected by the situation, 
repeatedly going through the photo album containing all of Suzanne's messages with Chad. I am uncertain when he plans to talk to Suzanne about it. I have decided to take a few more days off from work and consider working from my parents' place to support my brother and help take care of my nephew during this challenging tea. Update 2. For the last couple of days, Suzanne has been sending me messages that have slowly turned into more and more crazy threats. She continues to blame me for revealing her secret to my brother and the rest of the family without acknowledging any responsibility for cheating on my brother in the first place. At first, I brushed it off because it was understandable why she was angry at me, but over time, her messages have become more and more graphic where she keeps threatening to physically harm me for what I have done to her. Her messages became so vile that I was forced to show them to my parents today. My mom and dad were immediately upset and furious to read her threats. They urged me to show these messages to my brother. I hesitated, knowing he was already dealing with a lot and feeling down about the whole situation. However, when he saw what Suzanne had been sending me, he immediately switched to protective older brother mode. He assured me that he would handle the situation and told me to block her right away. He promised that she wouldn't bother me again and made it clear that he would take care of dealing with her behavior. It's been a priority for me to spend extra time with my nephew lately. With my brother and him set to fly back home in a couple of days, I want to make the most of our time together. Even though my nephew senses that something is off because Suzanne isn't around, being a child, he easily gets absorbed in his games and toys. For the sake of my adorable nephew, I hope everything turns out okay. Following my brother's advice, I have blocked Suzanne, so hopefully she won't be able to reach out to me anymore with her threats. I am focused on creating a more positive and comforting environment for my nephew during these uncertain times. Update 3. It's been four months since my last update. I know it's been quite some time before I updated the story but a lot has happened since my last update and I wanted to take some time to process everything. After my brother and nephew flew back home, he confronted Suzanne about the situation. However, she continued to deny everything, despite the clear evidence we had. Frustrated and determined to get the truth, my brother decided to have a direct conversation with Chad. In this conversation, Chad confessed to everything. Chad revealed that Suzanne had expressed her love for him and he reciprocated those feelings. According to Chad, he had no reason to continue hiding their affair. To my brother's shock, Chad disclosed that they had been involved romantically for over a year. This new revelation led to a heated and intense confrontation between David and Suzanne. A later when my brother told us about his conversation with Chad, we were heartbroken for him as well. My dad urged my brother that it was high time for him to decide their marriage. My mother agreed and told my brother that no matter what he decided, we would all stand by him. I also reminded him that he should keep my nephew's best interest at heart because it was unhealthy for a child to be exposed to such toxicity. Two months later, David made the difficult decision to file for separation from Suzanne. To the continuous fights had taken a toll on their relationship, and he realized there was nothing left to salvage. Unable to forgive Suzanne for her actions, and with Suzanne unwilling to confront her mistakes, it became clear that the best course of action was to part ways. As the legal process is still ongoing, Suzanne has been compelled to move out of David's home. The weight of her actions bore heavy consequences, and she faced the reality of losing her marriage. Despite the challenges, my family has remained a united front for David and my nephew. The emotional toll on David is visible, but he continues to exhibit strength and resilience, determined to provide a stable environment for his child, Daniel. Reflecting on the entire experience, I firmly believe that revealing Suzanne's affair was necessary for my brother's well-being and the protection of my nephew. The truth brought clarity and allowed my brother to realize that he was being deceived by Suzanne. I stand by my decision, and I will continue to stand by my brother and support him as much as I can in his journey to heal himself.